was such a jump off for our next guest and his band, and he will be a part of Carb Day 2023. That's May the 26th out at IMS, IMS.com, for your tickets to see Brian Adams and, of course, our next guest, along with his band, Soul Asylum, Dave Perner, is on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. Dave, welcome to the show, and Andy, how are you? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm doing real good. I got to go to practice uh, today, and we're rehearsing a, a band with, I guess, it's eight extra. We got a string section and background gospel singers, and it was pretty exciting. And, of course, I'm excited about Carb Day. Yeah. Well, when did you find out that you guys were going to be a part of that? And and obviously, it is something special to us and a lot of people around here. What did it mean to get that call and to be a part of something that is so big that weekend that involves the Indianapolis 500 for you and your band? Uh, really exciting because it's, you know, it's a fun kind of event. I'm sure it's going to be a blast. I honestly thought it was a typo. I thought it was car day. And then I thought to myself, what is the carbohydrates? And then I went, ah, <laughs> carburetor. <laughs> <laughs> which they no longer have, but they keep the name, which is, hell, it's all, it is all good. I can tell you this by experience. Those Carb Day concerts, it's the highlight of many years right there. I mean, many years you go out there and everybody's out there and ready to have a, a good time and, and can't wait to see you guys. I was thinking about this when I, I played Somebody to Shove coming back in. It occurred to me, I was in college at Indiana State in, in May of 1992, and if there was a song that was released at a moment in music history that seemed perfect for everything around it, it was Somebody to Shove. Right? May 1992. That had to be perfect for you and your band. Yeah, it was great to uh, sort of have a song that was very aggressive and very loud and have it be kind of our introduction in a way to a I guess a bigger audience now they play it at hockey games and it just occurred to me that you could probably use it thinking about racing somehow too yeah well I was thinking <laughs> about you little, so. I was thinking about <laughs> you in terms of hockey because I know you to be a pretty big hockey fan I'm assuming of the Minnesota Wild uh, but I will say this, given the fact that I want to say your first autograph was Jack Parisi, right? Whose son plays hey, Zach. Jean Paul, yes. Yeah, for the hey, uh, the Islanders. So are you, are you more of an Islanders person because of the Parisi name or still more of a Minnesota Wild because that's your home base? Yeah, I'm a Minnesota hockey person. Um, so I, I was a huge fan of J.P. Parisi when I was a kid. Had an autograph picture on my wall. He even went to a, a hockey camp that he taught, so I got to, I learned my wrist shot from my <laughs> hero. And uh, you know, years later, I see Zach on the ice, and I I got really emotional because I was like, oh, he skates like his dad, you know. So I was a big Zach fan, and uh, yeah, you know, it's Minnesota hockey; it's a big thing. I was on skates in nursery school, you know. Now you were still in and around Minneapolis. Is obviously your your band Soul Asylum was evolving into, you know, a big nationwide thing and turning into a global thing. How upset were you in the North Stars? What was the guy? Norm Green was that the owner then that uh, that bailed on the team and they moved to Very Dallas? Very upset. Very upset. And I'd be in a grocery store and I would see somebody with a Dallas Stars jersey on, and I just I got upset. I'm like, ah, they stole our team. So, yeah, me and my dad used to go to North Stars games. So I just I tried to get him to go to a wild game the other day, and he's a very old man and he passed. He's, he's, just, he's got bad legs, but I really thought I was going to, you know, return the favor and take him to a game. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, Dave. We went to a lot of games to go. Dave Perner of Soul Asylum, of course, part of Carb Day coming up May the 26th at IMS. Get your tickets right now, IMS.com. It occurred to me, too, when I was thinking about the North Stars, there was a film that came out in 92 called Untamed Heart that 
that was based around Minneapolis with Christian Slater and Marissa Tomei. And and they go at the very end of the movie. <laughs> and I don't know how the dynamic works time-wise. At the very end of the movie, they go. Christian Slater catches a puck, and then he dies in the car ride on the way home. And that's kind of like, that's right when <laughs> I think wow. the North Stars ended up like bailing out of town and going to Dallas. I guess maybe a little bit of symmetry right there in terms of what ultimately happened to your favorite hockey team. Yeah, I'll have to check that movie out. I think, uh, you know, Slapstick and Goon are a bit of the Tallahassee Knights of hockey, if you yeah. will, the movie. Right. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when you go back to seven, the slap shot with Paul Newman in 77 is yeah. the greatest all time hockey movie, Great. right? I mean, it, uh, the, when you talk about hockey movies in, in terms of uh, greatness, it's at the top of the list, I think. What are you, what are you going to take for a bowling movie? Is it Kingpin or is it The Big Lebowski? Which way? No, nah, I think it's still Kingpin. There's just too much of the Fairley Brothers. Is, is and I, listen, it, Lebowski's great, and Jeff Bridges. There's nobody better. But with the Fairley Brothers, because there's a laugh, there's stuff that we we shouldn't any longer laugh at, and we still do. So you know the 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 it's round and has three holes, and you put your finger in it, kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And we're quoting yeah, that. I know so, what you mean. Yeah. It's uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave Perter of Soul Asylum with us. You've been at this, you and your band, for such a long time with such a high level of success. And you mentioned going to practice here a little bit later on and working with, you know, different avenues of music and, you know, chasing a new original sound. Um, how difficult is that to do, to maintain, you know, that originality and, you know, to be an artist and a musician in this case, to come up and find something new? Well, I don't think it's difficult other than just, you know, songs is frustrating and stuff. It's just an art process. But as far as trying to sound modern, uh, the rock and roll thing, people keep thinking it's going to, it doesn't, you know, I mean, people are going to listen to, those synthesizers and turntables and whatever, but uh, it's it still works. I mean, there's there's these new bands out now, the uh, Amel and the Sniffers, and uh, there's a bunch of young rock bands coming out, and that's a that's a relief to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, at, at some point or another, it's just kind of doing what I do, you know. Um, but I like it loud, and I like it hard and all that stuff it just it feels right to me and and it's just kind of what i weaned myself on well well, you got you started out with a punk band right i mean it was a punk band and then what mid 80s it it transitioned into to soul asylum right so that was i I guess you cut your teeth on you know going at it hard from a, a punk sound standpoint yeah, they had this thing called hardcore punk, and it was just all about playing as fast as you possibly can. And uh, we kind of came out of that. And uh, around the time we put out Grave Dancers Union, I had started writing with an acoustic guitar. So it was a, it was a good coincidence that we did the uh, MTV Unplugged thing. Not long after that, we were used to playing acoustically well uh, i mean you know it helps to be able to address situations it's a dave perner with us one of the uh you mentioned the 30 year anniversary i believe right of your uh unplugged set for mtv yeah. that that will go down i mean you know among you know pearl jam and nirvana of that era it's it's right there you know allison chains with with that level of greatness on mtv unplugged and did you not just re-release the 30th anniversary of that set? That is coming out on record store day. When is that? We got vinyl. Uh, every year they have something called record store day, and at the and it's nationwide. Okay. And uh, I think it was a bit of a reaction to uh, the big stores eating up the little stores and CDs and this, that, and the other thing. And it was kind of an effort to keep the, the Ma and Pa or brick and mortar or whatever you want to call it, record stores alive by drawing attention to it. And, uh, it's really fun. 
like a lot of people come out and buy records and we're going to play at a record store. And, uh, I mean, I, Prince went out and bought a record on record store day, like the day before he died. I believe that's true. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a thing where these little, I don't know, record stores come and go, but they're always going to be around. I only look, so, yeah. so there. Yeah, I well, no, 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 that's, that, yeah, that's, that's good because I'm a big, I was just, I was thinking about it from this standpoint today because, you know, you know we, we talk sports here and I was coming back in with ACDC's Back in Black because Brian Johnson on this day joined, joined the band and that was, you know, one of those, yeah, one of those big moments in music history because I, I think Back in Black goes down in history as the most listened to rock album of all time. I don't know, you can debate whether or not it's the greatest but it's tough to debate. I think it may end up being the most listened to because it just spans so many different generations. And that's, yeah. I like we're getting back to, to the vinyl touch a little bit because that was all, that's so important to music. Music is a great soundtrack of the great moments. And we'll talk about Runaway Train, which has a message that certainly holds true today. But most of the time music does, to me, it puts me in a spot where it was great. I didn't have a great deal of responsibility, and I was having a hell of a time. And it always does that. It never fails to do that for me. It always has meaning no matter what situation you're in. And I think that's one of the great things about music, any genre in general. Yeah, you know, you can't, if ACDC comes on the radio, you can't not turn it up. Right. I mean, you have right. to. And uh, I remember the uh, the kids on the hockey team listening to uh, ACDC to get pumped up for the game, you know. And it's just uh, it's kind of funny because uh, I just heard it again during some sporting event. So uh, never ending, know. never yeah. ending. Yeah, right. Is. So, are you a Vikings fan too, or just hockey? Uh is from Green Bay, so I was. Oh, you're a Packers Packer guy. There. Yeah, I forgot you so are I, from Green Bay. My, uh, I'm not actually. I wasn't born there. Wikipedia, but anyways, my mom is from there, and my brother is a Vikings fan. So the smack talk is fantastic. <laughs> we we like to go to Vikings Packers games. <laughs> just give each other a hard time. I I think about this. We played, I think, a couple of Paul Allen is the voice of the Vikings there. I'm assuming where you are in, yeah. in Minneapolis yeah. right now. And he he always is good for a couple of outrageous calls over the course of an NFL season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, Dave, yeah, Dave Perner of Soul Asylum is uh, with us. How much did you know about the Indy 500 before you got that call that you guys in Soul Asylum are going to be a part of Carb Day? Well, I loved uh, watching. Uh, I loved watching it on the wide world of sports when right. I was a real little kid, and then kind of noticed I was getting into the crashes too much, which is kind of weird. But uh, I was in Indianapolis, and I went to uh, Richard Petty was one of my favorite drivers. Just I don't know why. I like the colors of his car, I guess. So you like the uh, the STP, the blue and the, yeah. the orange reddish kind of thing. Like, yeah, a, I got you. That's a cool car. I built a plastic model. So lo and behold, I just happened to be in Indianapolis, and I I want to go to the NASCAR museum. So I go to the NASCAR museum, which I thought was, and none other than Richard Petty is there, <laughs> and that is. Uh, wow, it, it seems surreal. <laughs> I had the hat on, and he has a glow around him, and uh, I was like, "Holy wow, that's him!" Yeah, yeah. So that was cool. That's awesome. It's uh, Dave my Turner. Other, uh, my other Indy story is uh, I was at a TGIF in Indianapolis, and a kid came up to me and said, "Hey, man, I work over at the track. You guys want to go for a ride?" And he took us for a ride around the track in a van, but. <laughs> You know, that was cool. <laughs> that happens. That happens often. Are you going to stay for the race? Will you guys stay for the weekend? I am going to stay. That's awesome. Well, hell yeah. So yeah. you got to come by. We um we do a pre-race show. Now, you don't have to crank it up at 4.30 a.m. like me, 
but you got to come by where we are right next to the pagoda and sit down and have a little conversation with us right there. I have a cup of coffee waiting on you. No, no, no. It'll be later than that. I got to get up at 430. Uh, you, you're just going to bed when I get up. So. Gosh, I hate it when I have to play a gig at 10 p.m. and then I got to go to the morning drive radio show in the morning. No, like, no. We'll give, we'll, give, we'll give you a later in the morning slot right before we bail for you because you're just going to bed when I'm getting up right there. So nothing nothing wrong yeah. with that so uh, i was thinking about this before i let you go dave perner of soul asylum with us again carb day tickets on sale right now ims.com they're going to be spectacular uh, you think sometimes the uh the music um of Min- minneapolis is kind of lost on people considering just you know, everybody obviously with prince and purple rain and all that but man mm-hmm. you look back at minneapolis and along with with soul asylum you guys and just such a great you know jimmy jam and terry lewis and the replacements such yeah. a great vibe of music that has come out of Minneapolis over the years. Amazing, yeah. I moved to New Orleans, and I lived there for 20 years. One of the greatest local music scenes in the world. The contrast is, is very big. Everyone in Minneapolis is playing electric guitars, and everyone in New Orleans is playing horns, and this, that, and the other thing. But people ask me that all the time. What is, what's with why all this music? And I was just watching a thing with Lizzo, an interview, and uh, she said she was talking to her, her manager in Houston, and they said, well, let's have a go at this music career thing. So we should go to Minneapolis, which kind of took me by surprise. I was like, it's still some sort of, I don't know. I mean, to me, New Orleans is like a mecca. Right. Uh, I'm from Minneapolis, so it's my hometown. But yeah, we got a we got a great music scene here. Yeah, and no doubt about that. You just, I mean, diverse too is is what uh, oh, yeah. I think about all the time. Hey, when was your first gig at First Avenue, which certainly was glorified in '84 with Purple Rain? When was uh, your first gig with Soul Asylum at First Avenue? Gosh. I don't know. I mean, we there. There's a smaller club connected to it called the Seventh Street Entry. Yeah, and we played there a lot. And then you kind of move into the big room, open for Motorhead and the Ramones and all these bands. But it was definitely probably an. It could have been opening for the Ramones. Um, so it was probably an opening slot. And then we eventually moved to the signing. Yeah, it's. Uh... Dave Perner with us too. Yeah, just a great music scene. That always sounds like being from that. It's, it's never really mentioned as much as some of the others. You know, obviously everybody always leans on Seattle back in the early nineties. Is you know, it's a level of greatness. But I've always thought Minneapolis was certainly right there. All right, so not at four. Huge connection. Seattle and the flannel and the weather and anyways, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, seriously, I, I uh, so many different bands. Sometimes you, I don't think you realize it until you dig a little bit deeper. I mean, you always you know knew with, with you and you know the replacements, but you dig a little bit deeper and get to some other stuff too. And it's uh, always always pretty cool. So I can slot you in at some point at Pagoda Plaza, not at four thirty in the morning, but at some point maybe after ten. You, will you be up by 10? Maybe. Do you normally get up by 10? It doesn't sound like you get up by 10. I'm guessing you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> and why don't we trade? I got up at 5 stinking 45 this morning to get my kids off to school. Why don't we trade for a week? I want to be Dave Perner. You can be me, the clown here in Indy. How about that? I, I might actually enjoy that. I, I've always been kind of a... Well, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some guest DJing on Record Store Day. I mean, I you know I'm not a great DJ. I can't. I don't have the great uh, sort of energy that your voice has. No, oh, shit, come like, on, man. Uh, I would trade voices yeah, but, with you in a second, man. Come on. <laughs> Look, the sound of this classic classic rock voice you have. I mean, I I sound like a hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'd, I might. I might be too slow. <laughs> I can talk fast, I suppose, if I want. <laughs> I gotta. I gotta think ahead. I've battled a lisp all my life. I'm gonna think ahead. There are like three or four nice. words that I know I can't say. Because oh, not, that's awesome. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta think How ahead a little bit. Is it that, uh, that Joe Biden met when he was little? What's that again? 
Joe Biden had a speech impediment ah. when, he was, when he was little, and that's why he's kind of slurred. Yeah, but, I always, uh, yeah, I I I always learn this. I, that, but. I can't say, like, I'll try to say it now, and I can't say it very rural. Like, R-U-R-A-L, that's a no-no for me because that's I, I just it's brutal on me. So I, I was rural. trying to think of it. Yeah, see, I mean, look. With rural. That, rural. <laughs> telling you, I'd trade you in a second, man. I would. I can't wait to see you guys coming out Carb Day. Let's remind everybody, May the 26th, Carb Day is out at IMS. Tickets available right now at IMS.com. And Dave Perner is going to join us. I'm going to go ahead and lock you in to the 10 o'clock hour on the pre-race show since you're going to that greatest spectacle in racing that Sunday. So we'll be ready for you. I'll be. I'll put you in touch with my people. You got it, buddy. See, it's cool to have. I have no people, so I'll get in touch with your people. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. You got it. Dave Perner, Soul Asylum on the Eddie Moore Automotive Group Online. A quick break. I love that. Back with you next.